for Lord Y. Savior Jesus Christ. Before I start anything, I, I should say, welcome to Dallas for the 16th annual conference of the Assemblies of God India Fellowship of North America. I remember it was a year ago when we were in Rochester, New York. When we decided that the, this year's uh, 2012 conference will be held in Dallas, Dallas was selected to be the place. And uh, I had gone up there because I was selected to be the convener. Never thought of that. I did not know it was such a great responsibility. And at that time, during the conference at Rochester, I had invited everybody assembled there. And I had said, finally, see you in Dallas. I remember that. And today, after a year has passed, I can stand here, thanking God for the whole of last year, the many months that passed by, God kept each one of us safe. He protected us. From then on, we planned, we put a lot of efforts into this. There has been a team that worked behind this. Don't get me wrong. It's not one person, it's not a one-man show. It's been a team who worked behind this effortlessly. They toiled, they put everything they could their time, their money, their energy, everything. And today I can stand here with great courage and confidence and say this, greetings in the name of the Lord. Welcome to Dallas. I know it's a great privilege for me and for Dallas and for the people of Dallas to invite you all, to greet you all. We are deeply humbled and honored to see the great men and women of God, especially great men of God, mighty servants of God sitting on the stage, off the stage, people who are about to come. We are so glad that you chose to be with us this time. It's a great thing that so many anointed men and women of God come together in one place. Because the, the heaviness of the anointing, the weight of the anointing, takes the balance in favor of the kingdom. So many times we take things for granted. We think that we are nothing. We think we are just another person. That is not true. We are anointed people of God, each one of us. And when we come together in unison, you know, devil is looking. What is going to happen in the next four days? These people have come from all over the nation and beyond the nation. What are these people going to do? Because of the anointing that God has poured on us, we will stand together in the coming four days. Mighty men of God will come forward and deliver the message and we can see mighty things happening in our midst. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. We are going to shake the foundation of the devil. We are going to stand together. We are going to get connected. And we are going to see an outpouring that we have not seen for a long time and we will remember a long time to come. And as I said, we are going to tilt the balance in favor of the kingdom. Amen? Amen. Speaking of kingdom, I want you to watch this small clip that I have for you. I've been playing this. Ever wonder how many hands? 
handshakes take place in a day? How many hugs happen? How many one-to-one -one face to face conversations go on? What about glances, kisses, laughs, and prayers? Ways we connect. And you, right there, right now. How are you connected to the person next to you? The people around you? Your friends, your enemies, the strange dude at the mall. How about the movies you watch, the books you read, the messages all around you? And how do you connect differently than people connected in the past? So many thoughts, ideas, blogs, texts, posts, and tweets these days. Everybody wants to connect to someone or something. And the World Wide Web of Intersection and Connection has changed everything. Get this, one out of eight couples married in the U.S. in 2008 met through social media. Unfortunately, half will be divorced in five years, connected and disconnected. There are over 500 million active Facebook users who spend over 700 billion minutes per month clicking, posting, uploading, and downloading. An average user is connected to 80 community pages, groups, and events, and each person creates 90 pieces of content each month. Folks got a lot to share, there, lots to say. So much that the average user spends 55 minutes per day, 6.5 hours per week, or about 1.3 full days per month on Facebook. And that's just people sitting around home, because more than 200 million are on Facebook through mobile phones nowadays, because long lost are the days of landline phones, busy tones, and yeah, baby jumps. And speaking of cell phones, in 2004, 674 million were sold, which is 105 million less than the 779 million sold in 2005, which is nothing compared to the almost 4 billion sold in the last three years. Some people in the world who don't have toilets or houses have cell phones. People really want to connect. But wait, there's more. One trillion text messages were sent in 2008, 1.5 trillion in 2009, and then it went up to 6.1 trillion just recently. That's a thousand texts per person for every person on the planet. That's a lot of connecting. Yet this hasn't even scratched the surface. There's over 50 million tweets per day, over 60 million LinkedIn people, and 43 million people still visit MySpace per month. Then there's however many millions on Name, Tag, Meetup, Bebo, My Yearbook, and Friendster looking at everything from posts to pics to video. Speaking of which, it would take you over 27 years without sleeping to watch all the videos uploaded on YouTube just this week. Everybody wants to connect. Connect with a friend, connect with family, connect to the past, connect to the future, connect to God. Hmm. Connect with God. The one who created connections, voices, images, ears, eyes, smiles, kisses, glances, faces, friends, music, color, stars, electricity, light, laughter, and love, just to name a few. Connect with him? And what does that mean? Well, you connect the dots. Time to get that multitasking, 100 billion neuron connected. Amen. Praise the Lord. Yes, the theme that we have chosen for this year's conference is the Kingdom Connection. Connecting with God, connecting with people. You know, in the Bible, there are over 22 parables that Jesus spoke about the Kingdom. And I was thinking why a man who was born in a borrowed manger, who did not have anything of his own, speak to his disciples and speak to the people all over the world about a kingdom a poor man talking about a kingdom how could he have the courage to do that i as a man cannot go out and speak about a kingdom but he did that because of the authority that was given to him by the father he owned the kingdom amen he also wanted us not to feel orphaned but he wanted to feel us to feel that we belong to a greater project we are part of something that is greater that we could have never imagined thought or dreamed the kingdom is powerful the kingdom has authority the kingdom has dominion and this is what God wanted to do. He wanted to connect each one of us to this enormous power, authority. And what did he do for that? He took his own begotten son, sent him down on the earth, put him on the cross, let him die, did not answer his prayers, so that we, no good human beings, could be connected to that enormous kingdom. Amen? Praise the Lord. Amen. And not only that, he wanted us as strategic partners in this kingdom, as we connect ourselves. In James chapter 4, verse 8 says, Come near to God, and he will come near to you. And as you come closer to God, 
It is on us. It is on us that reached out to people, reach out to people around us, get them connected to this enormous kingdom, the enormous power, the enormous authority. The kingdom is power to us. It gives us authority. But for people, when we stretch out our hands, for them it's compassion, for them it's kindness, for them it's love, for them it's mercy, for them it's healing, for them it's deliverance. God wants us to be that connecting link between God and man. And in the coming few days, this is what we are going to try and focus on to how we can be better partners in the kingdom of God. I mean, look at the cross. It's got two limbs. One is a vertical limb. You can see the head and the body and the feet aligned to the vertical thing, vertical limb. Everything in complete submission. And look at the horizontal cross, horizontal bar. You can see two outstretched hands. Completely, completely nailed to the cross, yet trying to reach out to people on the right side and the left side. Completely submitted, submitted to the to the to the Father, to the Kingdom, but trying to reach out to people all around us. This evening, as we move forward into this conference, this first day, I pray and ask God, God, connect us to you so that we can connect many others around us to this kingdom. Amen. Praise the Lord. Don't want to take any more time. I was looking at the program and I saw the program it was written inauguration by after that her name and I saw and I was thinking who am I to inaugurate a meeting where the Almighty God comes where his presence is. I was so humbled by the fact I'm a nobody to inaugurate. I would request everybody, let us from this moment connect to each other. Before we go on to the prayer, I would like everybody sitting together, just hold your hands. And what we will do, it's not a man inaugurating. We will ask the Holy Spirit and come and inaugurate this conference for us. Would you please join your hands? Kind like our community. Let the Holy Spirit inaugurate. And for the coming four days, let us see the mighty outpouring. Let us see the greatness of God, the awesome power of God being scattered into the auditorium, into people, so that they will be delivered, they will be healed, and they will take away all the burden from them. Let's come to the throne of grace. Father in heaven, we come to your holy feet. Thank you, Master, for this wonderful time. For the whole of one year, the team toiled. They put everything they had. Master, and we have come today for this evening. Lord, as we sit in your presence, we stand connected to you. We stand connected to the kingdom. And Lord, today we pledge that we are going to connect everybody around us to this great, enormous power of the kingdom and authority and the dominion that you have given to us, Master. We stretch out our hands towards heaven and we ask you, Holy Spirit, ask you, Father, ask you, Son, Jesus Christ, come and inaugurate, come in the midst of us, Master. Show us your presence, deliver us, heal us, and give us everything that you have for the kingdom that we need, Master. We thank you for the awesome power that you have given us. We stand together, Lord, for the benefit of your kingdom as we go back from here after four days that we can be useful instruments in the name of our King Jesus who, to whom belongs the kingdom. We thank you, we give you glory because of the awesome presence that you have given to us this evening. And we are going to see this presence and a great movement of the Spirit in the coming days in all the sessions. We bless our men's session, we bless our youth session, we bless our children's session, we bless our sister's session. We are going to see a great power of God moving in between us. We thank you for coming amongst us. Thank you for your great power. Thank you for your great presence. Give you all the glory all the honor and all the power because all that belongs to you in jesus name we pray amen, amen.